My last one that has been given to me is Luke 17, 1 through 19. And I'm going to make two comments. First, on 17, 1 through 6. And on 7 through 10 of chapter 17. And it is on forgiveness. It is inevitable, Jesus said in 17.1, that stumbling blocks could come. And a lot of times our own fellow believers can put stumbling blocks in us and it causes difficult feelings. And in 17.3, Jesus said, be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Now let's talk about that. We all think that as Christians, we should forgive. Jesus said those who are forgiven much should forgive much. But it's interesting here what Jesus said. If he repents, forgive him. And I've been in debates. Do we automatically forgive people? Even if they don't ask for forgiveness? Or... What happens if they don't ask for forgiveness? You ever had somebody do something to you to this day they haven't asked for forgiveness? Well, I think it is probably the best policy to emotionally not hold a grudge. But it's interesting here. I've been in these debates. If he repents, then you forgive. Well, what do you do with the person that doesn't? We all will point to Jesus saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. But if I can be honest with you in textual criticism, that verse is not there. Jesus didn't say anything at his crucifixion. Now, Stephen did say, Lord, do not hold this to their account. And there's a whole textual situation there. You can ask me about it sometime if you want. But Jesus said we need to be willing to forgive. But part of that involves also if the person repents. And if he sins against you seven times a day and returns, we should always be ready to forgive. But lack of repentance does not necessarily mean that you automatically have to forgive. I think it's better emotionally. Let it go. Don't hold a grudge or bitterness will come in. But Jesus is saying that there is a condition and that is forgiveness. Now, let's ask this. If a sinner doesn't ask God for forgiveness, does he forgive? The idea of confession is very strong here. Confession and forgiveness. Next thing I want to say is one that is really on my heart. And that is Luke 17, 7 through 10. It's a story of which one of you having a slave, plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come immediately sit down and eat. Well, the master eats first in 8 and 9. And he doesn't thank the slave. His slave's only doing what he was told to do. And here is the main point that I like. So to you, when you've done all things which are commanded to you, you should say, we are unworthy slaves. We've done only what we ought to have done. You know what Jesus is saying there? In living for the Lord, in doing what he commands us, we should not be looking out to praise these things as special. When we live for the Lord, Jesus is saying, as slaves did their duty and did what their master commanded, so also we should say, 
I'm just doing my duty. So when someone praises you for some act of kindness, for something you've done for God's people, instead of seeking praise of men, instead of saying, wow, man, that was great that I did that, trying to get public recognition, Jesus said to say, I'm just doing what the Lord requires. It's nothing special. I'm just following what he wanted me to do. And that I am his and I serve him. And all that I do is for his glory, not my own praise. <laughs>